probably thought I was going to show him a magic trick. What that look like out here? Hello, welcome to the flap card tutorial. Flap cards are really cool cards that you can make at home that can do really cool changes. Traditionally, they're used for magic, but you can also use them for cardistry. Regardless though, the way that you want to use them, they can be built exactly the same way. There are many builds for flap cards, but today I'm only going to be teaching you the way that I personally make my flap cards. In my opinion, this is the best, most durable way to make them, also the most seamless. So without any further ado, let's get into how to make flap cards. So I've laid out everything that you're going to need to make your flap cards at home. Uh, over here, I have some crafters tape. This could really be substituted with anything though. Uh, for many years, I used rubber cement, but you could use a glue stick, uh, super glue, double-sided tape, rubber cement, obviously. But yeah, for me, I'm just going to be using crafters tape. So you're going to need an X-Acto knife and some scissors. Over here, I have a scoring tool, which I'll teach you how to make in a second. And right here, we have some prim elastic thread. This is the thread that we're going to use to uh, thread the flap cards together so that they do the change. This is relatively cheap. I'll leave a link. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, if you plan on making flap cards at home, this is a must buy because this one spool will last you a lifetime. You can make well over 500 flaps with this one spool, so very worth the purchase. And obviously, since we're using thread, you're going to need some sewing needles. I also recommend you get yourself a cutting mat just so that you don't cut up your table or anything because we are going to be using the knife and scoring cards. Anyway, with all that being said, I'm going to teach how to make the scorecard real quick. Now, the best way I could say to make a scorecard is to just take two random cards, take one of them, and you're going to fold it directly in half. Try to get the fold as perfect as you can, um, because the less perfect that it is, the less perfect your score tool will be later. All right, once you have this card folded in half, you're going to take your other card and you're going to line up the half card with the full card over here. And you're just basically gonna try to score right down the middle of this card, okay? The best you can. You want to try to be perfect. If it's not perfect, you're going to have to do it again with another card. All right, I think I have everything lined up here. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my knife I'm just going to lightly apply pressure and run the blade down the length of my scorecard over here. And now hopefully I have made my perfect half card. And after you make this half card with your scorecard, all you're going to do is take some super glue and I bought a pack of popsicle sticks and just super glue the card together and then super glue the card down to the popsicle stick and it should look like this for you. This will be used to make all of your flaps. I would really recommend that you go and make a new score card every about 30 flaps or so because this side does get worn out with the blade always running next to it. So uh, make sure before it completely wears out and you can't use it anymore that you make a new one. With all that being said, let's get into how to make the flap cards. So you're going to need four different cards, okay? You're going to need the cards that you want to do the change. So I have red to blue. And then you're going to need two extra cards, okay? One of them, you're going to score and cut down the middle. And one of them will just be a base card that you're gonna lay everything on top of. But for right now, I'm just going to focus on the change cards 
because with these cards, we're gonna have to do something called splitting. Now with most cards, if they're printed from a quality printer, they'll have three layers to them. There's the front layer with the front die on it. So whatever design is on the front, there's a middle layer and then the back layer with whatever is printed on the back. The middle layer keeps these two layers together and makes it just a little more snappy, a little more durable. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to take off one of the layers. Now, if you're making a back flap, you're obviously going to take off the face layer. If you're making a face flap, you obviously take off the back layer. We're just trying to eliminate one of the layers so that the cards can be a little thinner once we put it all together. Now, how we split cards is I'm going to take the corner of one of the cards and I'm just going to tap it many times on my table. I'm basically just trying to rough up the corner so that will give us some leeway to get into the layers of the card. If you can see right here, we have a little bend up. This is kind of how I like to split my cards. And if you can see, there's just a little place where you can pick at with your thumbnail right here and if I just pick at it lightly you can see I have now accessed the first layer of the card. Once you have access to that first layer of the card you're going to want to now put the card on the table and you're going to try to get in there it's going to be really hard because it's not a lot of room but you're going to try to get in there with your thumbnail of your other hand and you're going to press down as hard as you can. And then with your other hand over here, you're going to lift up on the tear that you've made, okay? And it's going to start splitting the layer, okay? Now, when more room becomes available, you're going to put more fingers into the sleeve that you're kind of making here. This is so that there's always the most amount of pressure on the single layer and nothing gets uh, left behind because often what you'll find when you're splitting cards is you'll go to split it and let's say you're not putting down enough pressure, only like half the card will split and then you'll have to ding up another corner and try to get the access. This is what your card will look like once it's split. You can go ahead and get rid of the single layer. You're not gonna be needing it for the rest of the flat build. And yeah, once you've done it with one card, you're just going to do it with the other card. Now, as you can see, when you uh, split the card, the card will be very warpy, okay? It's gonna want to uh, kind of curl like this. So just to kind of get it in a little more of a flat state, you're not gonna get it perfectly flat, um, but you wanna at least just get it not in that direction. You're just gonna kind of play with the card in your hands, just kind of press towards yourself with the card kind of just rotating it in your hand. Like I said, you're not gonna get it perfect as you can see, but at least it's not curling towards the back. Once you have your two cards split, you're gonna go ahead and score them. Just use your score tool. It should make it very easy for you, especially if you've tested it before you use it. With the protractor here, I like having it because I can line up the edges perfectly next to each other. Instead of trying to eyeball whether it's on top or not, the edge just gives me a nice, good little stump so I can just easily slide everything on it and know I'm perfectly in the middle with my uh, scorecard. All right, once you know that everything is in the middle, you're just gonna go ahead and score it very lightly, apply pressure with the knife and just run down the line of the card and you should be able to fold it. All right, once you've scored one card, you're just gonna go ahead and score the next card. I now have my two half cards. All we're going to do now is we're going to put them together using whatever sort of bond you have. Like I said, I like to use the crafter's tape, but yeah, just go ahead and only glue one half of each card and then you're going to put it together. Once again, can't stress this enough, but try to be as perfect as you can when putting these two pieces together. Um, the more uneven that they are, the more easy it will be able to see once all the flaps are fully closed. All right, that is looking good. As you can see, it is now a flap card, kinda. It's kind of just a flap card before we put it down with everything else, but you can see it does the opening and closing. The next thing you should do, if you haven't thought about it already, is you should decide 
uh, which side you want the flap to land on. You want to know if you want it to be a red to blue or a blue to red. For me, I'm going to do red to blue. Once you have made that decision, you're going to take one of your other cards here and we're going to score this one as well. No splitting with this card, just score the entire card. Now you're only going to want to score it. We are going to cut it in half later, but I like to score mine before I cut it just so I know that the card is absolutely perfect, okay? That it's folded right, the corners are meeting. Just because there's been a lot of times I went to go cut it without scoring it and it ended up being uneven later. So this one's looking good. So now that we've already made the score, it'll be really easy to just run the knife right through that line. There you go, I have now cut it in half. Now you're only gonna need one of these pieces. If you're making two flap cards, you can actually use both of them, but I'm only making the one, so I'm just going to set the other one to the side. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this piece right here where the other flap piece isn't on the card. Now the reason we're doing this is because when the flap is gonna be open, okay, you can see that it's already gonna be super uneven on this side underneath, okay? There's gonna be a big gap right underneath this side of the flap, right? But once it flaps over and it completes, that extra layer right there will make the entire card flat because it's the same thickness as how much a half split card is, okay? So this is just so that when the flap is fully closed, it's also flat. All right, once you've made everything up to this point, you're going to be gluing this card onto this card. This is just a regular card. You don't need to split or cut this or anything. It's just going to be the base card that the flap card sits on top of. When I glue this to the base card, I'm only going to apply glue to this half of the card where the leveler card is. I'll explain why later, but just to put it on there. So as you can see, I have the flap card now placed onto my base card. Now the reason I didn't glue this side down to the base card is because over time, I've found that when you glue this side to the base card, the glue has a harder time staying together since like I said, there's that uneven presence of the flap kind of bulging up. So the glue becomes uh, less sticky and it ends up kind of just like not working at all. So what I like to do is I like to just thread this bit down to the base card. So how I do that is I just take some of our prim. You don't need a lot. This isn't going to affect the flap at all. So this is purely just to put that one side down onto the card. All right, so as you can see, I've taken the thread and double threaded it through the needle. When we're working with flaps, you're always going to be working with double threading. Now in terms of where you're going to place the thread on the card, um, with bicycles, there's this really thin white line that runs right next to the border, okay? It kind of keeps the rest of the design inside the card. We're going to use this line for both sides, okay? This line is really good to put the thread because it's already white and the thread is white, so it blends in really nice together. So as you can see for this first bit, I only like to put the thread about this far down, about like a quarter of the way down the card, okay? Because the regular thread is going to be put in the absolute corner. So we just wanna shift it down just enough so that we have enough room to place this card down. Once you've poked a hole on the one side of the card, you're gonna try to do it on the exact opposite side of the card as well. So about a quarter down from the other side. Once again, poking the thread through the white line. And now once you have made the two holes in the card, you're going to thread the needle up through the card and down through the other hole. So up through one hole, okay, as you can see, and then I'm going to place it down the other hole. This is because I want the tie to be on the other side so that you can't see it on the flap side. So once you have the thread through the two holes, you're just going to tie it down. The tie doesn't have to be anything spectacular. Uh, this is the one part where I'd say you don't necessarily have to be perfect because the thread is purely just keeping that one side down. So as long as the thread is together, 
you will have no problem. So after you've tied it, just go ahead and cut off the extra thread. And now boom, your other side is now held down with thread. All right, now that you have your thread through the one side of the card, you're going to thread the flap mechanism portion. So go ahead and grab some more thread. And like I said earlier, we're going to use the white line. For this though, we're going to put the thread in the absolute corner of this white line right here. So once you've placed the needle right there, always use the table to push the needle through the card because there's so many layers of card that you're trying to get through right here that it will really hurt your fingers if you try to just press it through with your thumb. Once you've poked a hole in one corner, you're going to go ahead and poke a hole in the other corner. And same thing, we're going to thread up the one hole and then down the other one. All right, so now that you have your thread through the card, it is important to try to tie this off as tight as you can, okay? The tighter the thread, the better, because we want the flap to fully close with the thread being the only force closing it. So just take your time, try to tie this as tight as you can. Like I said, the tighter, the better. All right, that is your completed flap card. Hopefully, if you did everything right, you should be able to open it up, let go, and it will flap over completely perfectly. So just to go over how to handle and use flap cards real quick, um, you're always gonna open it from the side that the thread is on, okay? Because that's the place where we made the flap open at. And there are a few different ways to hold flap cards. When in cardistry, you can get a little more creative on how you hold them because usually you're holding them within packets. But just on the base level, the two best ways to hold them are from a mechanics grip, okay? So just holding it and releasing the pressure. And from a kind of sideways holding biddle grip, obviously once the flap is fully over, to keep it in the open position, you want to apply pressure so that the thread doesn't snap back. And then obviously when you want it to go, you just release the pressure and the flap will come over. Now you typically only want the card to be in its open position for I would say a maximum of 10 seconds. So, you know, you can count this in your head or whatever, but I would say after 10 seconds of this being open like this, it's subjected to the thread just getting stretched out a little more and a little less uh, springy when releasing the pressure because this thread, uh, while durable, it is still very fragile. And if you stay to that 10 second rule, more or less, I would say that your flap card would last fairly long. If you're going to use your flap card almost every day and you're constantly uh, putting pressure on opening it and closing it, uh, eventually the thread will give out. And once the thread gives out, it's actually a lot easier to repair it because if you have the thread already, all you do is just simply cut off the thread, uh, make sure you are cutting off the right thread. It would be the longest thread on the back here. You just simply cut it off and just go ahead and re-thread it like you did in the beginning, but it's a lot easier because the holes are already there for you. So you can just go in, down and tie off. All right, and that's it. That's how to make your very own flap cards right at home. I hope you fall in love with making flaps just as much as I have. Uh, I know it's a very tedious and time consuming process and it's almost a guarantee that your first few flaps probably won't even work. But all I can say is just keep at it, keep building, learn from your mistakes and you will become the best flap card maker you can be. I'd like to thank uh, Jordan from Magic Skeptic for showing me a lot of these ideas. Me and him have bounced flap card ideas off of each other for years now. And I can say that I would have never came up with my favorite build here if it wasn't for him. So thank you to Jordan. Also shout out to Hondo Chen. He is an OG flap card maker in the magic community. And he's actually came up with a lot of these ideas that I've shown you here. Um, but he obviously has his own takes on them. Also, finally, I'd like to shout out Shane Lim, B 
because he was the one who initially showed me what flap cards look like in his at the table lecture and i definitely wouldn't have delved in as deep as i have now if it wasn't for him so shout out to him if you're at the end of this tutorial and you feel like flap cards aren't your fancy and you don't really have the time or patience to make them you're in luck because i have just started a web store where i sell my very own flap cards currently the list is quite small but i do have fontaines and anyone flap cards so if you have those decks and you don't want to ruin them to make flap cards with you can always buy some from me i will gladly ruin those cards for you and yeah that's it i hope you guys found this tutorial informative uh if you make flap cards and do something with them i'd love to see it go ahead and tag me on instagram if you guys have any further questions you can ask me in the comments i will get back to you but other than that i appreciate you guys watching my video i have more content planned in the future so please subscribe and i will see you in the next one